Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome to God News Network where the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network. Hi, I'm St. Rick, coming to you on this beautiful Sunday, and I have St. Albert with me once again, and we're going to dive right in here to the message, which the message is going to be about believe what God tells you. When he tells you that you are sanctified, you are holy, you are righteous, believe what you hear. Because the world's going to give you news like this. You're not good enough. You have to work harder. You have to get through sanctification. You have to get through holiness. You are working at it. You're really being good. But remember that little thing you did wrong, that little, little bitty incident that was just a little off kilter. You better get back on the track of holiness. You better get back on the track of sanctification. Nobody's sanctified, they tell us. They tell us nobody's holy. Only Christ is holy. Only, wait a minute. How do you become holy? How do you become sanctified? What in the world event must occur for me to finally get there and know that I've achieved that hurdle, to know that I've got over that fence, that I no longer can be told I'm not good enough? How do we find out? By listening to God News Network. You can do it on YouTube by going to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash God News Network. You can also go to facebook.com forward slash GNN Radio. You can also do it by going to Twitter at God News Network. You can also go to godnewsnetwork.com, which is where most people are going to, and they click on our uh, shows. You can go to the archive shows and all of that stuff. And if you decide, God put it on your heart to help us out, P.O. Box 55, Mount Zion, Illinois, P.O. Box 55, Mount Zion, Illinois, 62549. Thanks for listening. We're tuning in here, and I've got my brother, St. Albert. St. Albert, what in the world is this holiness thing all about and this sanctification thing all about that the churches want to tell us we're not good enough and we can't get there? Rick, well, they're actually saying in one uh, one side is uh, that Jesus Christ— did not do what he claimed that he came to do. You know, when they talk about... Wait a about, minute, that's uh, a bold statement. Are you saying oh, the yeah. churches are saying that that Jesus didn't do what he came to do? That's correct, uh, Rick. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. They claim it, but they don't believe it. You see, uh, when you start talking about all this, about who we are in Christ and all that, and they they talk about the sin nature of, of, of a believer and all this, what they're actually saying is that we don't believe. We don't believe what Christ said that he did. You see, because the f- sin nature and all that stuff and, and, and being sanctified a process of some kind of process, mysterious process that we're going through, refinement and all this, all that has to do with the law and it has to do with the old Adam, with Adam. You see, Adam was a person uh, and not just a person, he was uh, uh, a forerunner of the people uh, and the old covenant that were stuck with the law. And, uh, and, and uh, all the way up to Christ, the first Adam existed because everybody in the old covenant had to do with the, that uh, first Adam and the sin of the first Adam. Because what sin is, is really the breakage of the law. That's what sin is, it's imperfection. So when they claim that we have the nature of sin, what they're actually saying is that Christ did not kill that first Adam at the cross. So we're still in our old, in our old man, like they say, and there's no such thing as that. Either you believe that Jesus Christ did what he claimed to do, which is all over the Gospels and all over the new letters, you know, the letters of the, of the new covenant, or you don't believe it. You see, what was happening in the religious circles is that they don't believe it. And when they read you something, they read you something halfway, you know, and they don't complete the whole 
the whole paragraph stating what it's actually saying. And what it, it always says is that Jesus Christ completed what he came to do here on earth. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to find this old Adam and we're going to look for it and what it says and exactly what it means. So we have an old Adam and a new Adam. So we're going to go to Romans 5, 12. It says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. So if it entered into the world through one man, whom did it enter in through? That would be Adam, which is what uh, St. Albert is referring to and death by sin. So sin entered through man, death enters by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So death only comes to man through sin. So that's one thing that this, this is a mouthful on this verse alone, but it really, really says a lot. So by Adam, sin entered. And because sin got into the world, death passed upon all men. For that, all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam, similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and by the gift of grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abound unto many so life comes through christ death came through adam but it was really through sin Sin is what causes death. So if we can get rid of the sin thing, then we, we have life. We don't have death. We have life, right? That's correct. And, and what, sin, what sin is, is imperfection. Because sin is a breakage of the law. If, if we will, and the law is a shadow of the perfection of God. So the law is perfect, just like, just like the disciples said. The law is perfect, you know? So... Why is it perfect? Because it's a shadow of perfection, which is Christ. It's not man, it's Christ, the shadow of perfection, you see? So if we don't meet that standard of that shadow, that means that we are in imperfection, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what sin comes out of. Sin is imperfection. Man is in a, was in an imperfect state because they did not meet the standards of God. How did they not meet the standards of God? Because man decided when he went into the law to meet its own standards. And, and man's standards is not perfect. So when, when people start talking about that we, are the old, we still have the old man or we still have a sinful nature, they do not understand the cross at all. They do not understand what Christ came to do. Christ came to do away with that old creation, which was Adam, that old creation does not exist anymore anywhere in this world. There's no one in this world, whether you're a believer or not a believer, that is, is somehow related to the old Adam because that old Adam died at the cross. You see what I'm saying? I think you said it very well, actually. And whoever commits sin transgresses the law, for sin is transgression of the law. And that's what you're talking about on the perfection and imperfection, where God has a standard that we have to live up to, which is perfection, and that's keeping the law. And it's not just the Ten Commandments, but it's the 613 Levitical Commandments that exist. And we can't miss one. If we do, then we have broken the whole law it says and whoever commits sin transgresseth the whole law it's not just that section of the law well you're close to perfect because without perfection you have no entrance into the kingdom of heaven so and you know he who's he christ was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin Okay, now, if he was manifested to take away our sin, and you still say we have the old sin nature, then you're saying that he did not achieve his goal. That's exactly correct, because 
when the churches say that, they're not realizing that's what they're saying, or they are realizing it, and they're holding people down, one of the two. Either way, ignorance of the, of the cross means that you can't be sharing the cross if you're ignorant of the cross. That's correct, Rick. And, Whoever, and not just... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. And not just that, you know, when they, they come around, which is the same thing with First John 1, 9, you know, that if you don't confess your sins, that your sins will not be forgiven, all that, they take it because they do not understand the finality of the cross. Right. You see, when they're talking in First 1 John 9, and if you claim that you have sinned, you don't know him. Those are pre-believers. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and um, it's a shame that they use all those stuff to try to put their point in that the cross wasn't finished, and the cross is finished. And we're going to know that by if we continue on, it says, whoever abides in him sins not. Okay, Mr. Christian, if you abide in him, yes, I abide in him. Do you sin? Yes. Well, then it says here, if you abide in him, you sin not. Whoever sins has not seen him or known him. So if you're saying you still sin, then you're saying you don't know him because why? Because he was manifested to take away our sins. And if you say you still sin, then you don't know him. That's because correct. he was manifested to take away our sins. And it says, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, and even as he is righteous, he that commits sin is of the devil. And for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Again, he's going back to why Christ was manifested. He did it in verse 5, and three verses later, he did it again. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. So here we go. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. So here he says it, one, two, whoever abides in him sins not, three, Whoever sins has not seen him or known him for. <laughs> so let's put it in another way. Whoever is in Christ does not have a sin nature, <laughs> even if you're not in Christ, because the law is done away with. Well, you have to define who you are. Are you flesh or are you spirit? And if you say you, some people say, well, you do not sin. They're thinking flesh. Well, I know that sin, that flesh sins, but I'm not that flesh. I've died to the flesh. I have been crucified with Christ, as it tells us in Romans uh, chapter, let me see here. Look at this up. I think it's four. Yeah, chapter four. Uh, well, it is the kindness, uh, the riches of his kindness and forbearance of his patience. That, uh, it's back to the Adam thing. Yeah. You know, and that's, it, that is where Romans chapter four kicks in. Let me yeah, go let's, back to Let's, okay. let's, let's go, Rick, to, chap, to John chap, uh, chapter 16, 8, and let's see what, what uh, he says about what, you know, let's talk about what, what, what the effects of the cross are, you know, what, what it is that the cross did for us, you know. This is, that's why all this confusion about the sin nature and, and all this garbage that comes out in religion circles, you know, and about uh, we're sinning and uh, we're sinners and that, uh, and that we fall short, all that garbage comes out of not understanding what it is that Christ has done in the cross, you know? All right, John 16, 8. It says, and when he is come, Christ, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So there's three different things he's going to deal with. He's going to deal with sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, of sin because they believe not. So it's not because of all the little works and all the little things that you've done. It's because of unbelief. Right there it is. It's the next verse, 16.9. So you have to first decide you're going to believe. <clears throat> Once you get the belief in, there you go. You're covered. So you're not under this. 
1610, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Boy, that is, that is a powerful one there. And, uh, and people don't catch that, what that really means. What that really means is that he accomplished. He went, when, he, when Jesus Christ goes to the Father and we see him no more, that's the same thing that he told the disciples that he wasn't going to see him. Any, they weren't going to see him, but not to be worried because he was going to leave him his peace and that he had to go so the helper will come down to us. What he's actually saying is that he went to the Father and told the Father, I finished everything that you have for me to do. And here's my proof. I'm here with you. That is such a powerful statement, Rick, because that statement there will, will then, when we go to 1 Corinthians 6, 11, we will understand what it is that that statement means, you know? When he, went, when he goes to the Father, is that everything is finished. Because he came to the, wor- to the world to do the Father's will. And what is the Father's will? Well, it's the New Testament. And what is the New Testament? Is that he was going to do away with sin, with the devil, with everything. He was going to kill Adam at the cross. And he was going to do a new creation. And then the new, this new creation, only perfection is going to come out of this new creation. Nothing of the old. Because the old was buried, is done with. The old man was crucified. Just like Romans 6, 6 says. The old man was crucified. Th- this new creation that we are doesn't resemble at all. or doesn't even, It doesn't even compare to that old creation. And so when we say that we have a sin nature... It is an insult. It's just like what happened in Hebrews with the Jewish people going back to the, to the sacrificial system, that they were trying to perfect themselves in that sacrificial system. And what is, what is the disciple says? He says, man, you're stumping in the, in the cross. Hmm. You're, you're making a mockery out of the cross with that when you're saying that. When you're saying that, you, that, that, that we're sinners, that we have a sin nature, that we haven't been washed, that there's some kind of process of sanctification, that we're purifying ourselves, what you're actually doing is stamping in that cross because you don't believe what he says. You read it, but you don't believe what he says. Preach it, brother. I'm with you. And it says on, you were referring to 1 Corinthians 6, 11, it says, and such were some of you. Now, what does he mean, such were some of you? He goes that, uh, know ye not, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators or idolaters nor adulterers nor the effeminate or the abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. As such were some of you, past tense, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. Ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And All let things, me make, go ahead. Yeah. And let me make a little explanation of that, such as were some of you. You see, the reason why he says that and the reason why he says that they were all these people, all those sins that you uh, quoted there, is because he was talking to people that had just came out of the old covenant. So they were sinners. You see, those people were under the law. But when Jesus Christ died, those same people that he was talking about, those people that were that transferred from the old covenant to the new covenant, they were all these people, but they're no longer all these people. Why? Because Jesus Christ died on the cross. He had accomplished all this. And that's why he's saying all that. It's not, he's not talking there about us, that we were at one time uh, this and that and all those stuff because the law doesn't no longer exist. He was talking there to people who had just come out of the old covenant that transferred from the old covenant to the new covenant. People who stand right now who are non-believers their problem is not sin. Their problem is the sin of unbelief. Their problem is that they have to come to, to understanding who Christ is and accepting him. That is the sin. It's not, it's not that the other sins are accounted to them either. 
uh, whether they were whatever drunkards or whatever, none of those sins are accounted to them. The only sin that is accounted to them is the sin of unbelief. So that's why in this letter, and I'm sorry, but I have to explain this because a lot of people think that this is talking about an ungenerated man in the new covenant, and it is not. It's talking about a Jewish person or somebody in the old covenant that has just come into the new covenant. And if we want to look at this further, it's also all over the Bible on Hebrews 10.10, 10, where it says, by which we, by which will, which is the Lord's will, not ours, that we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hmm. Who does that not include? <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody. So ask yourself out there, if you're listening, does that include you? Have you accepted Christ? If you've accepted Christ, this is you. This is where you're at. If we go over to Romans chapter 2, <clears throat> down to verse 4. Do you despise the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance? Some people are upset by the fact that <clears throat> there's no judgment for what that guy did last night. There's no judgment for what this guy did. There's no judgment for what this person does or how mean they are. We, we have a, a situation where there's a neighbor unmentioned, but basically she was gossiping on Facebook about how the neighborhood's not the same since these other neighbors moved in. Well, she's referring to us because I built a building that blocked her view of the golf course. And, um, and she was going on and I just sent her a couple of verses in the Bible that said, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> God gave us two commandments. One of them is this one. The other one's love your neighbor as yourself. And I didn't say a word, but you know how the word of God cuts and how it goes in and does work for you. This is the word of God. It says you, do you despise the riches and goodness of, and forbearance and long suffering of God, not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance. He has forbearance. You don't have, he has long suffering. You don't have, he has riches. You don't have, he has goodness. You don't have, there's so much in here. His riches, his goodness, his forbearance, his long suffering, not knowing that that's what leads to repentance, not the judgment. Think about it. The more you judge your teenager, the more they want to rebel and do anything like that, right? So they run off and do whatever they want to do. So it's just go, be free, go do, have fun, and enjoy yourself. It's just not going to work out real well, but let them, they got to get there. And through that goodness, they'll, they'll figure it out. You're right, Rick. You know, uh, we always preach in church. They love it. Oh, my Lord just spanked me because of something I did. He took my house away, and I'm going through this as a punishment or, or, or because he's trying to train me. You know, like if he was putting on some pampers and, you know, they're, they're pamper training people, you know. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, even in the, in the Bible, it says that God never punished anybody whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, according to their sins, because Jesus Christ took the sin of the whole world. But you see, they don't believe it. Even in Noah, it was unbelief that flooded the world. It was That's not, right. it was just unbelief. It, it, even in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, it was unbelief. That's and right. in the end, it's going to be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be because of unbelief. And he protected those who were his children. And he protected them by pulling them out before anything occurs. So, you know, if it's going to be like that, then we're going to be protected. And that's just the way it is, you know. But what about all the suffering Christians around the world? Some are meant to go through stuff for his glory. That's right. And it doesn't have to do with anything that they did right or wrong. No. And, and, and also, there's people out there that that don't even know God. And God has, has, man, he has blessed those people a million times. And it's for his glory. Nobody knows what the spirit goes to and where the spirit comes from, you know? 
uh, and and we as Christians are always judging and, and stuff like that, you know, and, and all we're saying, you know, and, and it's, it goes back to the old covenant again. What did that guy do? Look, he has, he has this disease. What did he do against God that he, that he deserved this disease? Don't you Christians know that we are in an unperfect world and things happen in this world and they don't happen because God puts it on us because we did right and wrong. They happen because it's an unperfect world. And, and in the Bible, it says that this world will be perfected, just like we are perfected. Trust in that. Believe in that. Don't let this religious people fool you into thinking that God has not finished his work in right. us. All right. You know? In John 12, 31, it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. He's not judging who? us. He's judging the prince of this world who caused all the issues when he came into this world through sin by using the law to get men to do the things that they're, you know, not supposed to do. And it says here, and I love this verse here, he that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins in the beginning. But here's the good news. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Was he successful? It's either yes or no pastors. And if you're listening out there, you need to decide was he successful or was he not? And it it, not only does it say in verse six, whoever abides in him sins, not and whoever sins has not seen him or known him. But in verse nine, it says, whoever is born of God does not sin. Why? For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. It's you're born in the family by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, confessing with the mouth, believing in your heart that he was um, resurrected from the dead, that he was, you know, tortured on the cross, killed unto death, was in the ground for three days and rose from the dead. Because of that, you are now born of God. And because of that, he told Nicodemus, you must be reborn. This is what he was talking about. And because you are reborn, here is your blessing. You cannot sin for his seed remains in you. You cannot sin. It says it over and over. Verse nine, you cannot sin twice. Verse eight, if you commit sin, you're of the devil. For this purpose of the God was manifest to destroy the work of the devil. Verse seven, let, let, Nobody deceive you. He that doth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. So even as he is righteous, so are you. Verse 6, if you abide in him, you cannot sin. If you sin, you say you don't know him. And in verse 5, you know he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Hmm. And verse 4, whoever commits sin transgresses the law, for the sin is also transgression of the law. So there's where it starts. And then he goes, but here's the good news. He took away our sins. Therefore, if you abide in him, you cannot sin. (laughs) And then he commits sins of the devil. He is born of God and did not commit sin because his seed remains in you. You cannot sin. That is the truth. We're just reading the truth. And if you don't understand this, you're going to go, what about 1 John 1, 9? Well, let's go back there. And take a look at how 1 John 1, 1, 9 works, okay? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life, right? The life was manifested, we've not seen it, and we have seen it, and bear witness to it, and show it the eternal life, which was the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. That's what it starts right there. Yeah. So you got, you got fellowship and these things are, we write unto you that your joy may be full. How can your joy be full? If you've got to constantly go to sin, Oh, I'm sinning. Please forgive me over and over and over and over and over and over. Every time you ask over and over and over, you're saying you weren't successful, you weren't successful, you weren't successful, you weren't successful. Because I still got to, I still got to ask for sin over and over and over. Yeah, and and Rick, what that is, again, just like what we have talked about before about uh, uh, that that it was people coming from the old covenant 
this is exactly the same thing. What he is talking about, the first generation church, had Jewish people, it was comprised mostly of Jewish people, people from the old covenant, people from the law. And those people did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, you have sin in you. And what you have to declare is that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. You know, it's kind of strange that you will have to tell a Christian that's the believer in Christ that they were witnesses and that they felt him and all this and that they have fellowship because they believe in him and all this. You don't have to tell that to a Christian because if you have to tell that to a Christian, that means that that person is not a Christian. And that's Ooh, what it's, it's re re all repeat, about. That, repeat that one more time, brother. That if you have to explain who Jesus Christ is to somebody that so called himself a Christian, that person is not a Christian. Because a person who's a Christian is a person who has accepted who Jesus Christ is and accepted the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has done. And this, and this letter, what they're telling these people is that they don't believe in Jesus Christ and they haven't accepted that. It's talking to Jewish people or for, 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 or for anybody who doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is. And that is the sin that they have to repent of. And they have to repent that outside of Christ, there is no perfection. They have to come to Christ for perfection. And that's what First John is all about. Instead of this forgiveness of sin that you have to ask every time, like if you were in a Catholic church, for forgiveness of sin, what you're actually saying is that the cross did not accomplish what it was supposed to do, and that is to do away with sin. Well, the good news is, the cross did accomplish it. And if you're out there and you've not received Christ, we implore that you do now. We implore that you say, Father, I believe upon the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he was killed on the cross, that he was buried and dead for three days, and that he rose again to victory. And I receive him as my Lord, and I receive him as my Savior. And I receive him in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've said that, you are now a child of God. And guess what? You cannot sin because his seed remains in you. That is a promise. So you are free from the guilt of sin. How can you not be free through Christ if you don't get free from the guilt of sin? Therefore, accept this, receive this in the name of Jesus, and do not be upset at God's mercy and his grace and his goodness that rests upon you in your life. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to, go to God News Network each and every week. We've always got episodes up there, archived episodes up there, and the Lord willing, there'll be one there as often as we can possibly get it there. And with your help, we can spread this around the world to everyone, how free they really are in the name of Jesus Christ. If God places it on your heart to help out, please help us out by sending to P.O. Box 55, Mount Zion, Illinois, 62549. I have a vision. We're in the process of building a brand new building. It's very large and it has a whole section up there that's 3,000 square feet on the second floor. And we're asking that if you want to help us out, we really, really are looking to spread this God News Network all over the world as much as possible. And we have a whole section we are dedicating to the Lord of the building. The whole building is dedicated to the Lord. Everything we're doing is dedicated to the Lord. And we ask that you participate. P.O. Box 55, Mount Zion, Illinois, 62549. And remember, you are valuable. You are righteous. You are holy. And you are sanctified. And you are part of the saints now. And the saints are rising.